Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. So first up today, major shout out to Leo Koguan for making it to the Forbes 400 list for the first time. If you're not familiar, he's one of the largest shareholders of Tesla stock, and he's been an awesome member of the Tesla community for many years now. And he does watch Electrified. We've talked back and forth on Twitter a few times. So on behalf of the Tesla community, Leo, if you see this, many blessings to you and yours. Congratulations. Next up, we have an update from Benchmark Mineral Intelligence. They're saying the 2031 Gigafactory pipeline capacity has now crossed seven terawatt hours of planned production. However, of that amount, that's going to be controlled by only nine different companies. No surprises here, but China is also dominating this future Gigafactory pipeline with over double the capacity of the rest of the world combined. Not only that, but China has a stronghold grip on the cathode market set to be around 90% of the market share in 2030. You may also remember at a TED talk earlier this year, Elon said he estimated that the world would need around 300 terawatt hours of battery capacity to be fully sustainable. So again, on this path, we are still in the very early innings. Perhaps most importantly though, Benchmark put this chart together in terms of the top battery producers for 2021 by company and their projection for 2031. CATL was number one last year and projected to be in the same spot around a decade from now. Most importantly though, Tesla not on the list for last year, but over the next 10 or so years, they have Tesla in the number four spot. So not too bad for just a car company. Next up, this data is from some Edward Jones analysts. Yes, where I used to be employed. So it's going over the stock market return for the 12 months after the last rate hike by the Federal Reserve. The blue line is just the federal funds rate. So as you can see, the last seven times that the Federal Reserve has had a peak or the last rate hike, this is what the stock market performance has looked like. Five of the seven times it's performed positively and I would say pretty strongly. Most recently, positive 32%. Before that, positive 21. Of course, back around 02 to 04, it was negative 11% for that year after that peak, the last rate hike. And then prior to that, another three positives, all above 18% for the year. And the last one was also negative 11. Personally, I'm not ready to say this is actionable information because the circumstances now are different and more complex than they were in times in the past, but definitely something to keep in mind as we may see this peak for the rate hikes sometime early in 2023. Again though, even with that, it's subject to change if inflation doesn't start coming down. Moving on, Nueces County in Texas has held the public hearing for Tesla's proposed lithium refinery in the area. The commission has voted four to zero to establish a tax increment reinvestment zone or TERS. Tesla is looking for $16.2 million in tax breaks over 10 years from the Robstown School District. And this tax increment reinvestment zone is basically what will allow the Robstown School District to enter into an agreement with Tesla. So this isn't a done deal just yet, but definitely a step in the right direction. Here we have Electrek saying that Tesla is focusing on delivering large fleet orders at the end of the quarter. Of course, we all know about the Hertz order for 100,000 Teslas, but other companies like Enterprise and Avis have also been buying Teslas. Hertz did say it expects to have all 100,000 Tesla vehicles by the end of this year and is getting a lot of them this week, but more are expected to be delivered in Q4. Autonomy, who's starting its own EV subscription service, said they're taking delivery of 500 Teslas by the end of the week. Scott Painter, Autonomy's CEO, said Tesla told him that deliveries should pick up in Q4. Most importantly though, Painter, Hertz, and most likely the others as well, are not getting any discount from Tesla for these fleet orders. I can't think of a better way to boost your end of quarter numbers than with fleet sales. Just take a few thousand to one customer, get paid in one foul swoop, and you're good to go, rather than delivering them one by one to individual customers. And while I don't condone poor quality from Tesla, fleet customers are much less likely to be measuring panel gaps with a micrometer. Next up, not a Tesla app has updated a video of the pre-release of the upcoming software dot 36. Again, this is not out just yet. This is probably received from a Tesla dev. Underneath that, you could see how much uh, energy was used by your vehicle and different vehicle subsystems. So you could see how much energy was actually used for driving versus heating the cab and uh, conditioning, uh, pre-conditioning the battery or um, due to elevation changes. 
On the right side, you also have some tips or explanations of why the car performed this way. So let's go over to the park tab. Here you could see how much energy was used for your car while parked, and this is completely new. We, we knew that using the app or in waking up the car using sentry mode used energy, but you could actually now get a great idea of um, how your car is, where your car is using its energy. Um, so the breakdowns here, sentry mode, mobile app usage. So right every time you're waking up your car, your car is staying awake for a period of time. Um, but it's great to see um, how much energy is also being used to precondition the vehicle and um, for cabin overheat protection. So it'll be cool having this granular level of detail showing you where you're using the most energy and it'll give you tips on how to improve and be more efficient. Next up today, Tesla has sent out another email saying starting today, charging rates and off peak hours will change at select superchargers. In some locations they're going up, but there are a few locations that are seeing rates go down. Again, they're moving to different charging rates depending on the time of use. We've talked about it before, as this transition continues, there's going to be seasons where the electricity prices are pretty volatile. Now, again, most people are able to charge at home, so that should be the main narrative. And long-term, there are plenty of solutions for this, solar panels, battery storage, improving the grid overall, but presumably, we're just gonna have to deal with stuff like this for the foreseeable future. And maybe not everywhere, but most locations that I'm reading based on forums and stuff, supercharging is still more cost-effective than gas. On that efficiency note, I saw Sawyer link to this from energy.gov. When it comes to model year 2022 EVs, which ones have achieved over 100 miles per gallon equivalent, the Tesla Model 3 in the rear wheel drive configuration achieved the highest rating with 132. The Model Y in third, two MPGE less than the Lucid Air. Then we have the Tesla Model S at 120. And scrolling down, you'll see the Model X at 102. Here we have a 20 page note from Morgan Stanley and Adam Jonas talking about Tesla, AI day, and robotics. Really, this got pretty deep into the robotics segment. I'll include a link below if you want to, but I just wanna highlight a few things. We've mentioned this before, but Elon has said he's expecting 6 billion miles traveled as the biggest hurdle needed to achieve regulatory approval for FSD. We know that Tesla in its own Q2 documents said Tesla has eclipsed 35 million FSD beta miles driven. Based on historical data, Morgan Stanley saying, we conservatively believe FSD beta is on track to surpass the 6 billion miles traveled by 2024. Further, surpassing 50 billion miles by 2028 and 150 billion miles cumulative by 2030. I've said it before, but personally, it feels like late 2024 at the very earliest would be a timeline before we see any consumer owned robo taxis operating on the streets, even in limited geographies. And most likely more like 2025 or 26, given all of the regulatory hurdles and everything else. But the fact that Morgan Stanley believes Tesla will cross that 6 billion cumulative miles on FSD beta sometime in 2024 is definitely encouraging as things should pick up from a regulatory standpoint at that time. Of course, there's a lot already in the works from a regulatory standpoint, but what Tesla is planning to do with consumer owned robo taxis anywhere in the United States or Canada versus some of these other companies like Cruise or Waymo that are specifically geofenced and owned by the companies, there's going to be some big differences. As I said, the rest of this note really dives into the robotics market, setting the stage for how Optimus could fit into this. But Morgan Stanley did say they're not prepared to include Optimus as a line item in their Tesla model and would discourage investors from doing the same. Again, this will be linked below, but their price target is sitting at 383. Speaking of Optimus and AI Day, some of Tesla's AI team can't but help kind of hype up the event on social media. Clive Chan saying, Friday will drop a lot of insanely cool tech. And yes, I know that this is predominantly a recruiting event, but it's always great to kind of peek behind the curtain of what's really going on at Tesla. Tim Zaman, the engineering manager at Tesla tweeted out this, it's going to be nuts. I almost hate to say it, but my expectations are creeping higher. And in response to Holmars, Elon said, big improvement in high speed cross traffic velocity neural network coming next month. We also have Chuck Cook that tweeted this out, Tesla sending out alerts to some Floridians, telling them to charge to 100% to prepare for some charging locations being down given the hurricane. To any of you Southern Floridians out there, prayers up, stay safe. 
but I think it's really exciting to highlight what connected cars can do. This might not be super exciting, but thinking about the future where you could have an overlay of real-time weather, getting real-time alerts, it's just very cool what this new future should entail. Next up, when it comes to Waymo, Cruise, Motional, some of these other companies, the biggest question has always been, how can they scale? Because scaling is the only path to any level of profitability. Well, already GM and Cruise have run into some problems. Basically, Cruise has asked for a safety permit or an exemption to get some more of its vehicles on the road, both the Chevy Bolt as well as the upcoming Origin. Basically, so far, the authorities in San Francisco aren't having it. As they're saying, the limited number of between 50 and 100 cruises in operation are already causing too many disturbances more than they would like. Authorities have said, while a cruise AV can be recovered when a human driver is dispatched to a failure site to manually retrieve it, it's our understanding that the origin can only be removed from San Francisco streets by towing. Also, performance with a larger fleet or during the daytime hours that is not far superior to recent cruise AV performance could quickly exhaust emergency response resources and could undermine public confidence in all automated driving tech. As mentioned, there are only about 100 of these cruise vehicles operating in San Francisco right now. They're proposing another 5,000, but if even half of that was allowed 2,500, that's a 25X in fleet expansion that could significantly undermine street performance for all San Francisco travelers. Next up, just a quick update from Tata Motors, just so we can keep tabs on the Indian market in case Tesla ever decides to set up shop there. The bulk of the cars sold in India, the world's fourth largest car market, are priced below $15,000. However, electric models make up just 1% of total car sales of about 3 million per year, and of course the government trying to grow that to 30% by 2030. But two quick red flags. So first, they're saying that this new Tiago EV, Tata's third EV, should get 155 miles. Remember that number. Also, they're saying the current sticker price of about $10,000 is only for the first first 10,000 buyers. Looking up this vehicle on CarWhale, it's listing a driving range on the lower end of 250 kilometers or 155 miles and a battery capacity of 19.2 kilowatt hours. I can't confirm if this data is accurate, but that works out to an insane miles per kilowatt hour, almost double Tesla's efficiency, which is clearly not the case. So let's see some real world tests before we accept this data. Next up, Rivian has failed yet again to be certified for its entry into the Canadian market. Transport Canada couldn't share what Rivian's deficiencies were or how many times it's applied, but they did say they've yet to provide satisfactory evidence of compliance to all applicable Canadian motor vehicle safety standards. Here we have Jaguar Land Rover announcing a new initiative for the future, basically retraining about 60% of its staff to be able to work with luxury EVs. On the Jaguar side, they're looking to be an all electric brand by 2025 under their reimagined strategy. And when it comes to Land Rover, they're looking to release the first electric Range Rover in 2024. But on the retraining, about 29,000 people in total will receive training to design, manufacture, and service EVs over the next few years. Next up, it seems like Elon's been trying to have this censorship of his tweets removed all year by the SEC to no avail, but he's still trying. Elon's lawyers filed a new brief basically saying that this pre-approval for his tweets, this mandate is a government imposed muzzle that's inhibiting and chilling his lawful speech on a broad range of topics. His lawyers saying under the shadow of the consent decree, the SEC has increasingly surveilled, policed, and attempted to curb Mr. Musk's protected speech that does not touch upon the federal securities laws. A quick one here, but we get a new image of the Polestar 3. Now this full vehicle should be unveiled on October 12th. They are going to live stream the event, but there's the image for now. Definitely a car I'm excited to see. Last up, Sawyer said Elon is set to go on Russell Brand's show Stay Free next week, and it will premiere on Rumble Video. That'll do it for today. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Please like the video if you did, and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.